Welcome back to Sunless Sea. Let's continue our adventures with the Ape People of the Empire of Hands. So I can take a look around the islands around here and kind of just look at them, but before that, let's go to the actual port itself. Soul-hungry monkeys reluctantly tend this trading post, waiting for an opportunity to escape. Bloated fleas hop from ape to man and man to ape, gorging themselves without a care for which is which. Okay, so the ape people of this place... Well, I think I'm starting to understand why the Admiralty warned me about this place. Because the Admiralty said something that, like the handbook of the Admiralty, said something about uh, watch your souls, hold on to your souls, and don't take any of the ape men aboard. And this specifically describes them as soul-hungry monkeys, waiting for an opportunity to escape. So what I'm wondering is... How would they steal your soul? What would they do with the soul? Why Why do they want to escape? Why can't they escape normally? I don't know. There's something strange going on here, but I get a feeling that this Zeppelin they're, that they're constructing is a means of escape. Which, given that they're soul-hungry monkeys, doesn't sound like a good thing. If they're soul-hungry, I wonder if they would like crates of human souls here. Hmm. Anyway. Let's see. Um, let's get an audience with the flea-ridden mayor. <laughs> he is not busy. No appointments are required. Unlocked with the Empire of Hands, unlicensed spearophage, no more than one. I don't know what that means. Okay. King of an empty castle. The flea-ridden mare scratches himself on a chair made of crates, surrounded by boxes of long-rotten trade goods. As a five-souled ape, he would be able to petition for membership of court. For now, the trade embargo has left him trapped on the outside, a three-souled overseer with no talent for order. What? There's some really weird stuff going on here. A five-souled ape, what does that mean? The apes have different numbers of souls? What? Is that literal? Like, is that literally how many souls they have? Or is this just like a weird way of referring to, like, some sort of a hierarchy of power? With five souled being all the way at the top. The, the king, the top ape, or whatever. So if he had five souls, he'd be able to petition for membership of court. Membership of court. Not membership at court, but membership of court. Where Where is court? Is that here? I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I don't understand. And there's apparently a trade embargo, which is from the Admiralty, I believe. Given that they don't want me to really trade here. Oh god. <laughs> he, looks, <laughs> he looks like he's planning something. I think he wants my souls, holy crap. The mayor's shack. Alright. Uh, in better times, being overseer of Porn Stanton, of... Port Stanton gave the incumbent their pick of visitors to the Empire. Now it is a thankless, as thankless a task as any to be found in the Neath. Hmm. Sell my soul to the mayor. No! 200 echoes for my soul. My soul's worth more than 200 echoes! I don't... What, what even happens if you sell your soul? Like, I, I'm not even going to try that. This fuel will cost a hefty 40 echoes per barrel. Acquire emergency fuel. Hell no. Alright, I'm not selling my soul. I'm not buying fuel that I don't need for four times the price as normal. So, what does this do? Oddly, little of the Empire of Hand's natural bounty is edible. The monkeys will help you find the edible stuff. For a fee. Hmm, 20 echo. This could actually be very good. I mean, 20 Echo back in London is the price of one supply, and this says acquire fresh supplies. So if this gives me more than one, then it's totally worth it. Let's do it. Oh, one supply. Well, that's just the same as back at London. A crate of berries, fruits, and more. Most of them taste unpalatably bitter, but they will do. You and your crew no harm in the short term. 
Alright, I think I just got one supplies, plus some exotic diseases, and... Shit, you know what? There's probably a fucking stowaway in one of those crates of fruit or something. Alright, well that's not worth it. So this place is fine to get supplies from, but not fuel. Fuel is four times normal price, supplies are one times normal price. In other words, the same. Okay, goodbye, don't steal my soul, bye. Outside, a crowd of monkeys have absolutely not been listening in s who have absolutely not been listening in scampers away. Uh-huh. I don't want to send my people on shore leave either, because I think they're going to come back with their souls stolen. Let's not do that. I've had an audience. Okay. Let's check out the Zeppelin. Turned away. Two monkey guards wielding rifles and rusty bayonets block the bridge. This is not for your eyes, outsider. Avert them. Walk away. Walk faster. Good human. Okay, so secret work. Gotcha. I'm guessing they plan on smashing the trade embargo. Using their zeppelin. Hmm. So I wonder if I could gain their trust somehow. Maybe I could if I sold my soul, but, uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Nah, that, that's not gonna happen. Okay, well, I'm not doing chore leave. I'm not selling my soul, so I think the only thing left to do here is just pre prepare a comprehensive port report, which I can't do unless I actually do these. So. Zailing the Empire of Hands. Communal wooden boats offer free passage to all travelers willing to row between islands. Let's start from the top down. A scouting trip to Sovereign Island. A wooden palace stretches across the whole island. Passage to it lit by a field of tiny glim buoys. Where are these buoys? I don't see them. Huh. Let's do it. The heart of the empire. Many boats circle the island, all keeping their distance. The one that gets closest is an extended rowboat painted in yellows, whites, and reds. Four servant monkeys strain at the oars, while its true passenger sits in comfort behind a gauze curtain. Just for a moment, an eye catches yours, but only for a moment. It would not do for a high-souled ape to see something so beneath its notice. Oh, there's actually story events for each place. Oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, I was worried this place might be... Like, I might leave this place quicker than I thought, but no, I think this is going to be pretty extensive. Today, the sprawling palace is called the Wild Wheeled Court. Tomorrow? Who knows? The world of the Pentecost apes is one of cruel whimsy, where stolen traditions last only as long as their amusement. Oh, the Wild Wheeled Court. So this must be the... Uh, where it said that the mayor of Port Stanton, if they were a five-souled ape, they could petition for access to the court. So I think this is what they're talking about. This is the court. Gain access to the court. That's not going to happen. I need a gift for the monkey emperor, whatever that would be. Right. Back to the boat. The guards stare as you row away. This will take some effort to ingratiate yourself here. Perhaps if you could find something on one of the other islands... Hmm. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Alright, let's go to Ash... Isht... Ishtmis. That is rather hard to say. Ash Ishtmis. Neither man nor ape claims this volcanic remnant between islands. Haunted, they say. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh god, my fear is about to go up, isn't it? 35? Eh, I'll be fine. I'm only pretty much as far away from London as I could possibly be. What could go wrong? Of apes and monkeys. The trip offers a little time to think on the penties. Technically, they are monkeys rather than apes, but it is not tactful to remind them of this. To their high-souled faces, the accepted name is Pentecost Apes. In private, though, the... I, 
I, once again, I don't know why that's underscores instead of what it's actually supposed to say, which I think is bitchy? In private, they're known as the bitchy monkeys, and that's about as common. It is, one might say, an ad... <laughs> it is, one might say, an ab... ad hominoid insult. <laughs> ad hominoid. <laughs> I've never heard that before, that's awesome. Right, because they're not hom... Yeah, they're not homonyms, or, you know, humans, they're hominoids. Return to the boat or enter the forest? Of course we're entering the forest. Black, uh, yeah, black beaches give way to an oasis of gently flowing trees and the scent of rotting flowers. Parasynthetic vegetation thrives in the empire of Han's fertile soil and cool humidity. This place sounds lovely. How could it be haunted? Let me guess, I'm about to come face to face with a ghost. Into the woods. Wide natural paths run between clumps of trees, softly lit by a dim green glow and the occasional glimmer of false stars through the canopy. Only the cracking of leaves and the soothing sounds of water break the serenity of this volcano-forged paradise. Okay. Two choices. Hunt for supplies or relax in a hot spring. 22% chance of success is absolutely freaking terrible. Not many of the plants and ber uh, berries here are familiar, but some of them at least look similar to ones that were being eaten back in Port Stanton. Yeah, not exactly well acquainted enough with the local vegetation to actually make the call on whether they're edible. Not exactly much of a botanist. I don't need supplies. I mean, it'd be cool, but... Nah. Let's relax in a hot spring. Steam and a hint of sulfur gently rise from a secluded natural pool flanked by trees and mushrooms. A moment for yourself. You slip out of your itchy clothes and into the welcoming caress of hot, deep water. The salts and, and sweats of zailing life melt away as you simply float. Bare and free. Above, false stars glimmer bright enough to be worth wishing on. All around, the glow of the trees cast ambient calm on the silent peace. How long has it been since you had a moment like this? Since London? Longer? Lost five tear. Nice. <gasps> oh, that's awesome! So... While you're sitting there floating in this hot spring, staring up at the false stars through the canopy, you can choose what you want to think about. That is so cool! God damn, this game's awesome. Look at that. No thoughts. Thought for the Z, thought for the East, for the future, for the past, for my child, for my lover. A thought for your lover. What is the likely lass doing right now? Are you on her mind like she is on yours? Oh, those knights in Wolfstack docks. The noise, the passion, the delightful filth. The hot water hugs you tight as you remember her touch. Your last words before departing. That half-smile almost, but not quite blossoming into completeness. How long will it be before you feel the touch of skin on skin once again? Or wake to see her sleeping brow, always so furrowed, as soft and calm as the Z itself. Wait, what was that? It sounded like... giggling. Is some ape watching me naked? Is there a peeping... a, a peeping ape? A peeping Tom? What would a Peeping Tom equivalent be in Apeland? I don't know, I can't think of an appropriately ape-like name that's as generic as Tom. Also, something I just realized in this, um, wake to see your sleeping brow always so furrowed, as soft and calm as the Z itself. It seems to be implying that her, her brow is soft and calm as the Z itself, but the Z isn't very soft or calm, is it? I mean, it's filled with fucking monsters. <laughs> and there's huge faces underneath the water that try to eat your ship. Or at least I'm assuming they do. I've never really risked it. So, 
Is he saying that her brow is not soft and calm? Anyway, who's giggling? Caught. A tiny blonde girl perches, watching on a rock. Her innocent grin is spliced, is spiced with mischievous glee. It's not a peeping Tom, it's a peeping Jane. And is it even an ape? It says girl, so I don't I don't know if that's an ape. She moves like a monkey, but she giggles like an imp. At the look on your face at being caught bathing in her hot spring. And the one that floods onto it as she scoops up your clothes. You little fuck, am I going to have to go running naked through the jungle? Oh, you definitely don't look like an ape. A monkey foundling, shipwrecked as a baby, raised by the Empire of Hands. She now plays between the worlds of apes and men, neither quite one nor entirely of the other. Well, likely lass, I'm think, uh, I think I'm bringing a new kid home. Um... Demand she put them down or a desperate swim. I don't think she's going to obey if I tell her that she should put them down. I'm gonna go swimming. The monkey foundling makes things interesting. She waits, grinning innocently until you emerge from the hot spring with nothing but your strategically placed hands for modesty. Before you can get close enough, before you can get close enough though, she bolts from her crouched position and into the forest on all fours. A scampering run that turns every rock and fallen tree into a springboard. <laughs> my quest for dignity quality is now one. All right. <laughs> Let me see if I can regain my dignity. Chase or let them stare. Hmm. I'm tempted to just let them stare because... I mean, let's face it, I'm hot as fuck. So, if, you know, if you want to get a look at this, this sexiness, then... Go for it. Got nothing to be ashamed of. But I should probably get my clothes back. D underscore underscore N it. You cannot return to the crew like this. Into the forest. The branches scrape against your skin. The damp mud squidges between your toes. There's no sign of the monkey foundling, but her tracks are easily followed. Quest for Dignity is now two. Alright, so it looks like I can always just end and just go back, but no, let's keep going. A forced clearing. The footprints led here. She had not even attempted to hide them. It's as if she wants you to follow. Hmm, she might be leading me into a trap. That's fine. Ouch. Your hand slaps to your stinging buttock. The little stone lands in the dirt as a familiar giggle comes from above. You look to see the monkey foundling dangling upside down from a branch by her legs. A blowpipe in hand and bag just out of your reach. Tantalizingly so. Taking a deep breath, you politely, very politely, request that she return your damned clothes now. The monkey foundling listens, and gives it some vat, tapping her blowpipe against her lips as she decides. Say, please, she grins. Please? Pretty please? <laughs> Throw a rock at the little wench. Pretty please. With an imaginary cherry on top, if she likes. Pretty pretty please, she adds, stifling a giggle. Pretty 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 please? Damn it, it's freezing. How much longer? Oh, again? Hmm. Okay. You appear to have pretty, pretty pleased her, and she decides you deserve a reward. She fishes in her bag and generously throws you a sock. A single, solitary sock. She learns a few new swear words as she races off across the branches, near doubled up with laughter. 
<laughs> oh god. Oh, I need veils to keep chasing her? 24% chance of success? Oh god, veils are one of my weakest. Ugh. Ah, fuck it. I failed. A trap. Your feet step into the coiled rope just as the monkey foundling cuts loose the counterweight and you feel yourself flying upside down into the trees. Of course she has traps. The wider empire has no shortage of would-be invaders, man and monkey alike. She sits back and enjoys the show as you flail around trying to get free, before apparently taking pity on you. Pity, however, turns out to be casually and without warning, cutting the cutting through the rope, dangling you in the air, and sending you falling back with a surprised thump to the muddy forest floor. It knocks the air out of your lungs, but you are otherwise unharmed. She pauses for a moment to make sure, before she grins before her grin spreads back again and she races off to continue the game. keep going. The monkey foundling slides down a vine in front of you. She sticks out her tongue and scampers through a break in the trees. A marsh of terrible stench. It is a place that skunks would think twice of entering, if the Empire of Hands had such creatures. The monkey foundling, of course, is unconcerned, as much at home here as high in the branches or running in the forest paths. She almost dances, effortlessly, across a thin fallen tree that crosses the mire, surrounded by the foulest bubbling mud that has ever invaded your nostrils. She balances in the middle, daring you to try to follow. Look, even if I fall naked into this horrible, stenchy swamp and, like, my limbs rot off or something, I don't care. I'm getting my clothes back. God damn it! <laughs> Why doesn't something use my mirror skill instead of using veils? It's the worst thing. All right, well we're getting some new skill checks. We're getting some iron in here, which I, I can't meet at the moment because I'm too short of it. Ugh. Unless, no. <laughs> I was thinking maybe I could right-click on one of my officers, talk to them, and upgrade my iron, but nope, can't do that yet. All right, I'll play. Though the crossing is treacherous, particularly when one's hands are torn between modesty and balance. And failed. You slowly cross the marsh. It is slow, slow going. Your muddy feet slide against the thin trunk as it buckles and strains under your weight. Inch by inch, step by step, you slowly make your way across. Until, bored, the monkey foundling suddenly jumps up and down hard. The tree rolls under your feet. Your balance fails. You slip, tumble, are embraced by a marsh whose smell will never leave you. You fight to the surface, streaming brown and dripping green, violently coughing up a gagging throatful of the foul slime. The monkey foundling sits cross-legged in the safety of the tree, in the safety of the trees, holding her nose as she points and laughs. She pirouettes on a tree stump, saluting as you approach. Ambush. A screeching Pentecost ape drops from the branches. The shock on the monkey foundling's face makes it clear. This is not part of her little game. Its rage is focused entirely on her, the ghost of the Ash Ishthemis, and the bright soul with which it can uplift itself to glory. It limps from some trap earlier, its fur blood-soaked and glistening. It lunges at the monkey foundling, who half rolls, half falls off the stump and yelps as it catches her by the leg. She rolls, shrieks her own howl as she lashes back with a kick that shatters Fang and splits its lip. This only further enrages the frothing ape. It strikes. It's all fun and games until a screeching ape comes out of the jungle. Okay, well, I think this is my chance to hopefully help her. The little wench has it coming? Holy shit, the thing might be about to kill her. No. Let's help her. She meant no real, no real harm, she was only playing. Rock beats ape. I guess it does. Rock, paper, scissor, ape. Yeah, rock does beat ape. You reach for a stone and bring it crashing down on the distracted ape's head. Its skull cracks, dampness spreading. It collapses to the ground, hard. It is not a child's face that looks up, up at you. Still, you reach a hand down. 
The monkey foundling just stares at it for a moment. Something human returning as the adrenaline fades. For a moment it almost looks as though she will take it. But no. She leaps up on her own, bounding away towards the dark safety of her jungle. And then stops. Hesitates. She looks back and tilts her head, beckoning you to follow. It is a look that suggests the game is over, but perhaps not yet quite finished. Quest for Dignity Quality is now 50. Okay, we're going places. Looks like she's taking me to her home. A small hut in the middle of the forest. Is this where the monkey foundling lives? Why would she leave you here, of all places? Playmate of the Monkey Foundling. The Monkey Foundling herself is nowhere to be seen, but she has left you something. It sits outside the hut, carefully placed by a large happy face drawn in the black sand. A little prize for being such a good sport. Your clothes, however, are nowhere to be seen, of course. As the monkey part of her would no doubt demand, where would be the fun in that? So for all that, I'm still naked, and now I'm holding an outlandish artifact. This belongs in a museum. Alright, there's no avoiding this any longer. Let's return to the ship. An out-of-uniform experience. <laughs> oh wait, I just, I'm just, I haven't read this yet, but I lost, they lost 10 terror. So I'm guessing that the fat, like, everybody laughed at me. And that reduced terror. Which I guess is a good thing. Let's see. The crew reacts with the expected amount of sympathy to your naked return. Which is to say exactly none. By the time you board the ship, every last crew member is on hand to see and cheer. With more than a couple letting off flares as impromptu, impromptu fireworks. It is many, many days before the needling ceases and you are able to give an order without first scouring it for innuendo. On the plus side... It does boost at least the rest of the ship's mood while it lasts, and you have a new treasure for your collection. You've had worse days. <laughs> that was awesome. That was so cool. Okay, two more to go. Fountainhead Island. Ancient secrets peek out of the trees. Any may visit, but few penties ever bother to make the pilgrimage. A young ancient ancient empire. The empire of hands is hardly as old as they pretend, but mimicry and theft infuses their whole culture. If the Pentes had come to think the rulers should be buried in ancient temples, then it is ancient temples they will build. It would hardly be the first time their attempts to mirror humanity have entirely missed the point. Swiftly growing vegetation keeps a thick forest wrapped around Variably ancient ruins. Even the yet-to-be-plundered ones are heavily scarred with crowbar marks. Treasure hunt. Hmm, if I had an ancient-ish treasure map, I could do that. Well, let's take a look at the temple. In a clearing of parasynthetic trees looms an imposing structure of wood and stone. The Vault of the First Emperor. It stretches through the forest in a mix of stone and wood. It's style at the mercy of the Pentecost ape's current whimsies and inspirations. It would take a dedicated team to break in and uncover its secrets. Perhaps you'll bring one here later. Oh, so I can't do anything with it? I guess I don't have a dedicated team, whatever that means. Okay. Last one. Hearthsake Island. A thin pillar of greasy yet appetizing smoke rises from the only human settlement in the Empire. The Blumenbach Quarantine. The Admiralty has never stated precisely why it seeks to keep the Empire confined, though most opposition to it fades once said opposers actually encounter a Pentecost ape. They have been easy to corral, however. Though they do not lack wit, there is not an inventive bone in their hairy bodies and no amount of stolen humanity has taught them the art of creating engines. Hmm. So it sounds like they're having a, probably having a very hard time actually making the Zeppelin. Hmm. 
The survivors of a pirate expedition have stolen this land, where apes are unwelcome except as an entree. Ooh, there's a treasure hunter. Well, I think I know exactly what to do with you. So I can go for the treasure hunter or approach the village. Um, let's take a look at the treasure hunter first. He squints at a map, muttering incoherently. North for each city the bats have brought down. He wipes his brow. Have you seen a big X on the ground by any chance? I got these four map pieces that got me this far and said X would mark the spot. But I can't find an X anywhere. He looks at the map sadly. It should be here, it says. Now, where am I supposed to dig? He is too busy to talk right now but adds that he will be in the village later if you want to trade adventuring supplies. Don't try the meatballs, he warns, getting back to his search. You just don't want to do that. Why wouldn't I want to try the meatballs? Are they made out of Pentecost apes' testicles? Okay, let's approach the village. Greasy smoke and guiltily tempting aromas rise from a collection of huts around a long beached pirate ship. And a field of pointedly impaled monkeys. Jesus Christ, they really don't like the Pentecosts here. An explosion almost takes off your head. Sorry about that, booms the boisterous pirate, lowering a smoking blunderbuss as bits of shattered tree rain down. New arrival, are we? Well, if you haven't got a tail, you're alright by me. He squints, momentarily suspicious. You don't have a tail, do you? Wouldn't put it past the thieving little buggers to go shaving one of their own. Wouldn't know fair play if it kicked him right up the ass. His voice is louder than his blunderbuss. The congealed meat juices in his thick beard are better not considered. Ugh. It was not madness that drove these pirates to cannibalism but years of being shipwrecked without the comfort of meat. After a while, any meat would do. They seem a friendly sort, and are shocked at the idea that they would ever be such poor hosts as to eat a guest. But then they have no shortage of supplies. Hmm, that didn't seem to go anywhere. The Z is quiet, the journey is pleasingly uneventful, you have not been eaten by cannibal pirates. All things considered, a successful trip. Hmm. Let's see. So it looks like I can look for a rowboat. I can also prepare a comprehensive port report. That's not going to mess anything up by doing the comprehensive port report, is it? Oh, wait, this is a new one. Um, Well, let's do the port report first. Right, no, no harm in that, I suppose. Yeah, comprehensive port report, hunter fragments. The islands of the Empire, all of them warrant further attention. For now, though, it would be best to see if your initial discoveries can whet the interest of anyone back home. Well, not exactly. Um... Oh shit, I think that ended it, didn't it? Damn, that did end it. Okay, so it's one or the other, apparently. I would have preferred to not take that intelligence back home. I would have liked to see what was going on here and... Uh, shit, actually, I really don't like that result. Because I feel like it just cut off a bunch of really cool story events. But I'm assuming I can come back here and do it again? I mean, it can't be the end of all of those things, can it? Turned away from that. Audience. No, I don't want to do any of that stuff. Wait, no, that's still there. But the one out here is missing. The one that said perhaps there's something you can do with all that information. So that's missing, but let's see what this does. You make a note to return later. Uh, let's see. Until then, business awaits elsewhere. If only the monkeys had proper ships, their islands would have proper docks capable of handling yours. Oh well. You'll need the help of someone in Fallen London to continue exploring the Empire of Hands. Check your lodgings after submitting your port report. Okay, so yeah, I can come back here later. So, not, not ruined, just only delayed. 
And it says check your lodgings. Why my lodgings? That's weird. Hmm. I'm curious what that's going to turn into. Okay, well, that is it. Now, where am I off to? Well, what's my fuel? Eight, so relatively low. Con Shadow is where I want to refuel, because it's somewhat reasonable. Pretty much the most reasonable price I'm going to get around here that I know of. So I kind of want to head back to Fallen London at this point, so I can go stock up on candles and come back to Godfall. And do all that stuff. Do I have anything in a particular interest in my hold? Nope. Hmm. Okay, well, I can use the Cask of Mushroom Wine at Savior's Rocks to get a port report. And there might be some interesting stuff here in the blackness. So, I think... Yeah, what I'm going to do is just head straight north. Up here, head up to Savior's Rock. Go over here. Um, I guess I'll pick up some clay men from Bollythream while I'm at it. And then hit up Conchetta. Yeah, sounds good. Up here, and over here. Alright, north it is. To sail! Zail! Gonna save a bit of my fuel. Although my terror is kind of increasing really, really, really fast. But I'm worried about fuel, so I'm gonna save it. Probably one of the places I already visited. Eh, there's something in the water. I don't know what that is. Really don't know what that is at all. Oh god, that's a really big boat. Look at how big that is compared to mine. Jesus Christ, that thing is a beast. And it got wrecked here. Really tells you something. I wasn't entirely paying attention to my Z-Bats reports down here. I don't know if I missed one. Look at all the spiders crawling on your face as you sleep and stealing your life essences. Get a port report. There we go. Oh yeah, the trade supplies for silk thing. I've never tried that. This actually could be very, very lucrative. I mean, what if I just bought a crap ton of supplies from London and just came here? Oh yeah, and then there's a delivery of trinkets. Let's do that, might as well. I don't think that even takes up hold space, does it? Nope, that's a curiosity. Oh, I don't want to do any of that stuff. No, too, way, way too high risk. 12%, 16%. Do I want to hit up Aestavel? Aestavel is pretty close. Aestavel is pretty close. And that's some cheap supplies up there. And I have enough fuel to go up there and then down to Con Shadow. Alright, I'm going to try this. I'm curious. What does this do? So you trade two supplies and you get one bolt of spider silk. And spider silk sells for... Well, I can check that in just a second. We'll only be needing to stock up on supplies like this till after the Festival of Silk, warns the merchant, as his people load your goods onto the ship. It'll be back to Echoes like regular after that. But still, you come see me and I'll give you a deal after, um, give you a deal that turned Mr. Vale's cloak white. 
He pauses for a moment, checking the shadows on instinct. Of course, if anyone asks, I never said that. I wonder when the Festival of Silk is actually going to happen. Because if the festival happens, then they're not going to want supplies, so this opportunity would disappear. Hmm. Alright, so I believe Spider Silk is worth 50 back at London. Which we can check right here. Yeah, 50 Echoes. Let me see if it's worth something more in another place. Let's see. Wait, I have no silk found? There's no... Oh, I guess no place really buys silk that I have on my list, I guess. What about spider? No? Okay. Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd be selling it back in London. So it's worth 50, and it takes two supplies, and two supplies is worth 40 back at London, so that's a 10 profit. Eh, that's not... I mean... It's okay. Like, if you're going to come here anyway and you bring, maybe, some wine for Godfall, pick up some clay men at Polythreme, and you bring a shit ton of supplies to Savior's Rocks, I guess, you know, it'd certainly pay for the trip, but... It's not really worth that much. It's okay. It's alright. Alright. Let's save on fuel, and let's go get supplies at Aestavel. Supplies at Aestavel, and then down to Con Shadow to resupply on fuel. And then we are going back to London. I'm suddenly slightly worried that I'm not going to have enough fuel. But no, I should have plenty. Right? Right? I think I'm going to have enough. Okay, well I'm going half the distance to Aestavel. So the distance between Con Shadow and Aestavel, I'm traveling half the distance from here. How much do I use? 50%. Let me see how much I use actually getting to there, because then I can multiply that two times and see if I have enough left. I had 50%. I can't get into a fight, though. I, I can't spare the time. So if there's a behemoth dish around here like there was at one time, then I can't fight it. Alright, I just used up about 50%. Okay, yeah, I, I totally have enough fuel. Looks like I'm going to use up. Uh, just to be careful, let's round it to one barrel. I started at 50 and I made it down to about 50. So that's about one barrel to go here. And if it's two times the distance to go to Con Shadow, then it's two barrels. And I have five barrels. So, yeah, we're fine. Supplies! Oh, port report first. Now supplies! Damn! I think that's a new best. Didn't lose any crew and gained 11 supplies. Whew. That's... That's a pretty incredible amount of money. That's 220? Echo worth, right there? Yeah. Okay, Con Shadow. Could stop at Nuncio for a port report, but I'm not even gonna risk it. I'm just going straight to Con Shadow. It's possible Nuncio actually sells fuel. They actually probably do, but it's probably going to be 20 per each piece of fuel, whereas a Con Shadow, I believe it's 15. God damn, your terror goes up really fast like this. I'm just going to draw my light. It's fine. I know I have enough. Well, okay, if I have to avoid that spinning thing of doom, maybe I don't. <laughs> the Fink Noddle Vortex. It's not actually on my map, is it? It's not. Oh wait, no, yeah it is. Just for some reason it's not actually indicated with a spiral. Hmm. 
Good evening, Vortex. All right, yeah, we're fine on we're fine on fuel. We're fine. Hello, faces. See if I can excite them. Hmm? Go away, please. fight them. I don't know. I have a limited fuel, and I'm, it would take me a bit of fuel to reposition myself to get behind them, so nah. Not interested. They'd most likely drop fuel, but it's not guaranteed. Alright, fuck off, please. I don't want to shoot that thing, because it'll increase my suspicion. And I'm pretty sure it has a gun on the back, which means I'm probably not going to get away completely unscathed. Um... I could go over to Khan's heart and do the Drowning Pearls thing, but, uh... Let me just get fuel. I don't want to run out of fuel and have to... Like, call AAA. Two feet from a port. Don't look at the stars, lost one tear. Alright, gained a shit ton of terror running with my lights off. <sighs> okay. Fuel. Man, I've got ten outlandish artifacts. Nice. I just need enough to get back to London. I don't want to overdo it. Ten should be fine. Let's be careful. Get a little bit more just to comfortable. 12 will be fine. 12 should be fine, right? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, let's go see if I have enough drowning pearls to go open up the Khan's Glory Trade Network. Or Kinate Trade Network, I should say. What? I want to fight! Fuck off! There isn't even anything here. Alright, is this where I do it? Time the tea house, seek intelligence, hire crew. No, it's at the other place where I do the stuff. There's so many things here. Alright, other place. Here we go. Yeah, so five drowning pearls, I have 37, so that means I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can get seven favor, right? And what do I need? Um, how does this work? I need a leopard's condescension five. 
Alright, whatever, I think this is gonna work. Yeah, so that- so five gives me one Taman's Mercy, and one Taman's Mercy equals... Oh shit, you need three Taman's Mercy? I don't know, whatever, I'm just gonna do it, let's see. Okay, <laughs> where does it lead me? Um, ask your Taman contacts to intercede with the Leopard, so that's what I can now do because of the Drowning Pearls. Yes. That will reduce my suspicion. That's not what I want to spend my mercy on, so that's not it. God damn, this takes so many pearls. I don't think it's going to do it, but I guess we'll see. So what I want to do is have them intercede with the leopard, right? Mm-hmm. All right. New total, four. Okay, so it costs four mercy. Four of Taman's mercy. But it gets me two. Now I'm up to four. That, does that do something? I need five. God damn it. If only I had three more pearls. Motherfucker. I can also get, um, I believe I can get one more point of condescension directly by giving them five sacks of dark drop coffee beans. Which is probably a lot quicker than using, d uh, pearls. Yeah, probably a lot quicker. Um... Let me check something. Do they sell Dark Drop Coffee Beans at Con Shadow? No, they don't. So I can't just pop right over there and get them. I also can't buy Dark Drop Coffee Beans at Aram, which is relatively close. Hmm. Because I kind of want to do this right now since I'm here, but I don't think I really can. I can buy sacks of Dark Drop Coffee Beans at Adam's Way. Where is that? I mean, I know where it is, but how... Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright, that's really fucking far away. I could also just buy them in London. I th they're probably more expensive than they are at Adam's Way, but... That's a lot of safer place to go. Did I totally skip Polythreme? I did, because I went up to Ace Devel. And I went to Con Shadow and I skipped Polythreme. Oh, well. Claymen aren't that big of a deal. They're not worth that much. I ain't going back. Alright. Well, yep, I'll just get some more Dark Drop coffee beans. Uh, get five sacks of them next time I'm at London, I guess. Next time I'm in London and I'm going to come around here. Grab five. That should gain me one mercy. Which is what I need to petition for access to the quarter. I have four condescension. I need five. And then we should be good to go. Mm-hmm. It's a plan. Okay, well, before this episode becomes too long, I think I should end it here. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And in the next episode, I'm going to head on over to London and dump off what... Don't have anything here to deliver, but I do have the box that I got at Savior's Rocks. Yeah, Savior's Rocks trinkets, just trinkets, which are actually spider eggs. They're not trinkets, they're illegal. Gonna dump those off, it's not worth that much, but... Um, I also want to deliver my very important port report that came from... What was the place called? Empire of Hands. I want to deliver my important port report back to London and see what happens with that storyline. See if I can maybe take somebody aboard... According to the quest, it said that they might be in my lodgings or something. Like an option in my lodgings that would allow me to continue that quest. Perhaps bring somebody back to the Empire of Hands, which is a storyline that I'm very intrigued about continuing. So we can get that started. Get some Dark Drop coffee beans, get that started. Heck, I could just go back to London and buy a crap ton of candles and bring them to Godfall. Which actually would take me up here next to Khan's Glory anyway, so maybe I'll do that. Yeah. I can come back here with shit tons of candles for Godfall and also a bunch of Dark Drop coffee beans for Khan's glory. It's gonna take a lot of room. But given that I can resupply at Khan's shadow, I could probably wing it. I could probably do that. That sounds good. 
I like that. I think that's what I'll do next episode. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.